Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix and I'm joined once again by Coda. <laughs> hey. It's me again. Yeah, different profile picture but same old person. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And um, as the wheel has has been spun, and it has landed on our <laughs> this this old ass book that we stopped reading two months ago. <laughs> God. So uh, so we'll be reading the totally dramatical uh, Duncan X Reader. So if if it's been a while since you read it as well, um, I believe we just got done with that singing. I think yeah we had a talent contest, and and we yeah, we thanks. sung, and we got interrupted by Courtney because Courtney's a little jealous, mm -hmm. yeah a little bitch. But <laughs> but now we're gonna figure out what the fuck's going on in epi in the uh, chap. What is chapter is this six? We'll uh, one two three four five yeah yeah all right we'll f we'll figure out what's gonna happen now. So Let's I go. I realized that we didn't name our character for, for this. Oh yeah, this was a while ago. Yes. So we weren't. Well, does the character have like a canon name? I feel like she did. No, it's YN. Oh okay. I know. Um, the Elliot book was Maria. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, we need a name, a favorite color, an eye color, and hair color. So how? Okay. <laughs> Shotgun. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Shotgun. Shotgun. All, all one word or two separate words? Yeah. So one it's word. okay. I don't know if like shot Shotgun. was her first name and then gum was her. Middle name. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's also really funny. <laughs> Shot, comma, gun. Yeah. <laughs> what would the last name be then? Like Smith? <laughs> Just to be odd. Shotgun Johnson. <laughs> oh, sh I like that. This is this new canon person's name. Shotgun oh, Johnson. <laughs> Look out for Shotgun Johnson. <laughs> Alright, so I'm thinking favorite color. I, I feel like black since we are named after a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, we, we can. I, I was definitely thinking something should be black. Yeah, uh, eye color. Um, brown. Okay, basic bitch. I say, is I have brown eyes. <laughs> yeah. All right, and hair color. Hair color blonde. Of course, we're a fucking blonde. <laughs> yeah. Is it blonde is spelled with an e at the end, right? Uh, if it's a girl, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> let me close this so we can start reading. <laughs> All right. Uh, who would like to start? I have, I have a bag of chips that we can flip. <laughs> let's, let's flip those chips. All right. Do you want to be the the side that says Cheeto Puffs or the side that has the nutrition facts? <laughs> uh, hit me with those facts. All right. Let's go. It's Cheetos. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let's, let's see what we're fucking getting ourselves into. <laughs> Campers. Today's challenge will test your outdoor survival skills. I'm not gonna lie to you. Some of you will not come back alive. Chris smirked at the reactions. I roll my eyes. Dramatic much? Oh, yo, that's the name of the book! <laughs> 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 Just joking. All you have to do is spend one night in the woods. Everything you need will be at your team's campsite in the forest. You just have to find it. Oh, and watch out for bears. Lost a couple of interns in pre-production. First team back for breakfast wins invincibility. Well, off you go. I began to praise my clothing choice. Black leggings with a black sweater. At least I won't freeze to- Yeah, I, I, yeah, that is true. You- Yeah. At least I won't freeze to death, but there was- But there were numerous ways. Chris tossed a map and- Chris tossed a map and compass at Duncan, who barely had time to comprehend what he was holding before Corny came in and snatched from him. To my surprise, he didn't complain. Nor provided a snarky remark. I raised my eyebrow, eyeing him. What happened between those two last night? Oh yeah, they started arguing, remember? Oh shit. Some fucking drama went down. Total drama. <laughs> Yo, you're right! 
Bada bing, bada boom. I walked with Bridget, her admiring all the scenery. I nodded at her words, my mind spaced out. I was trying to see if I could recall any of the words that were exchanged with the two last night. They'd been angry, that was for sure. They had been loud enough to hear from the cabin, but the walls muffled any proper sounds. I sighed before glancing over at Duncan. He was walking near DJ and Jeff, although didn't seem interested in their conversation. I took my shot. <laughs> Maybe he'd tell me. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, let's 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 see if he'll spill the beans on what happened. Mm, beans. <laughs> we do you want to go ahead? <laughs> Do you I want can. me to read? I can start the beans. Start the beans. Start the beans. Beans are so good. Uh, it depends on the bean. Or like feel. black beans. Black beans are really good, yeah. I don't know who the fuck just regularly eats chickpeas, but those are kind of weird. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had, like, a, a lone chickpea. I've had, like, hummus. Oh, I, I fucking hummus hate hummus. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that you cannot enjoy... Uh, you, that you're missing out on hummus. I know. I I did, um... What was the thing? I was, about to, <laughs> I was trying to think of my words. My mom did buy chocolate hummus, and that shit did not chocolate taste like hummus. hummus. Yeah, it's like a dessert hummus, and it was super good. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Anyway, you can spill the beans now. Okay. The, the right. tea is simming over here. <laughs> yes. Bridge, I'll be back, I say, watching as she nodded in acknowledgement. I sped up my pace, matching his with a few easy strides. Hey, I chirped, watching as he didn't bother to glance over to acknowledge me. Hi, he replied, a bored monotone covering his voice. I raised my brow, scanning his face. You done staring, princess, or are you going to go back to your friend? He asked, finally bothering to glance in my direction. It was as if he was playing a poker face. He was unreadable. Deep in my heart, I felt that string of sadness again, and for a different reason. Yeah, bye, I say, quickly retreating back to Bridget. She could tell something was up with me, and even though I prayed that she'd leave it be, she was quick to jump on the matter. Hey, shotgun, you okay? She was <laughs> looking over at me, concerned. I thought about it for a moment. No, I was not okay. The guy who thought, who I thought was my friend, or maybe even something more, was now turning his back on me? Suddenly, the sadness was replaced with anger. Typical. I should have known something like that would happen. I forced a smile. Oh, you know, same old Duncan. I shrugged the matter off, focusing my attention back on the surrounding area. Damn, what a bitch. <laughs> yeah, for real. I stood at the far edge of the group, resting my back against a tree. At that point, I wanted to go back to the cabins and find myself a nice, quiet corner to hide in. Me too. <laughs> yeah, but this, like but this is a reality show, and I'm not going to get my privacy. And then it hit me. Reality shows are all about drama, so maybe Duncan's trying to play it off for the cameras? Who knows? He could have planned to befriend me, expose my weakness, and then... Have that as a as a lingering threat on me. I glared in his direction before deeply sighing. No, he wouldn't. I was overthinking a task in which I was amazing at doing. <laughs> Same. So true. So true. Yo, the shotgun just like us. <laughs> <laughs> just like us for real. Yep. I saw Corny and Duncan in a heated discussion, and then I began to question what was happening. Before I could think of the matter anymore, I noticed Jeff and Bridget. Wow, you pitch a tent like a guy. <laughs> Jeff seemed to be admiring her, but with all the wrong words. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not all girly about getting dirty and stuff. I stuffed a laugh, biting on my lip as a smile formed. This guy really, really did need some serious help. I saw DJ run in, a small creature in his hands. Hey guys, look what I found. He smiled, displaying the small animal. I rushed over, giving the little rabbit a scratch on the head. Oh, look at him! I smiled. DJ and I completely absorbed by the small rabbit. Duncan wandered over, a smirk forming. Well, I never had a rabbit stew before, but what the heck, I'm game. I, gl I grimaced at him, receiving a smirk from him. You touch him, and it'll be the last thing you touch. I said, completely innocent in my voice. Duncan seemed to smile at me before plastering a, fount a frown once more. DJ let out a gasp before cuddling the small thing. This is my new pet. I'm calling him Bunny. I smile once more, kissing the gray animal on the head. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Bunny. I exclaimed, patting the rabbit. We still don't have any food. That's it. Shotgun and Bridget, we go and look for something. I look over to the brunette. 
Why are you telling everyone what to do? Shouldn't you be equal with the rest of us? I asked, crossing my arms over my chest frustratedly. I'm the team leader, Shotgun. If you don't like it, I'm, ha I'm happy to leave our next loss up to you. I glared at her before storming off without even waiting for the ladder. Who did that girl think she was, bossing everyone around like that? She can't take being challenged. I glared, hearing footsteps trailing behind me. I huffed, crossing my arms over my chest. Who does she think she is? I mutter aloud, sighing in frustration. I did not sign up to be ordered around by some bossy air kittens perfect to come to a stop, <laughs> taking in a few breaths. Bridget, I'm so- As I started to finish my words, I noticed it wasn't the blonde that had been asked to come with me. Oh, it's you. I stated, rolling my eyes. The male laughed, leaning against the tree next to him. Calm down, gorgeous. I, I asked to come with you. I raised my brow, my protective- Stance, not f shit. I you know what I can do this. <laughs> I can read. You got this. You got this. Not f flattering. No, that doesn't faltering. seem right. Faltering. Thank you. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh really? Gonna let me get eaten by a bear, huh? I asked, sarcasm le leaking in my voice. Duncan sighed, rubbing his head. Look, I didn't mean to make you angry earlier. I glared, turning my back at him. Doubtful. Why'd you do it then? I heard him sigh, however. He didn't respond. That's what I thought. I said, rubbing my arms. It was starting to get colder, and not even my sweater was protecting me. Look, I'm sorry for earlier, right? I paused for a moment. He was apologizing? No, that was a first. <laughs> I sighed. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, the <laughs> bad boy Duncan don't apologize to no one. <laughs> I sighed, turning back to face him. He got in closer, direct, nearly directly behind me. You're not going to let this go, are you? He asked me, chuckling. Nope, although I do appreciate the apology. I won't, I won't ask you why, though, but do it again and I won't be so nice. I smirked before turning away. Now let's go look for these damn berries. <laughs> get these berries. I would say get that bread, but there's no bread out here. <laughs> yeah. Berries are good. Uh, you know, yeah, I like berries a lot. I don't think you should eat them from the woods, though. Because <laughs> I feel like no. that's just something bad waiting to happen, but... Yeah, like, I mean, if, if you are an expert forager and you know exactly what uh, berries are good for you to eat, though... Mm -hmm. But if you're just, like, some guy... <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> just some average dude just walking through the woods. <laughs> yeah, if you just if you just happen to be in the woods and see a tasty berry, I would advise not consuming it. Yeah. Personally. Yeah, in our own personal experience, uh, you should not do that. <laughs> yeah, bad for you. <laughs> okay. After an hour or so, it began to get dark. From that time, Duncan and I had gathered a plentiful of different berries, although we hadn't been able to find anything else. As we made our way back to the campsite, I observed him. He seemed calm, at least, more than what he was earlier. During our argument, I would noticed that he'd been on edge, but once we combed over everything, he was fine again. It confused me, and I began to think back to home. Stop Flashback. wasting your time on that. The echo of shouting could be heard down the hall, the young girl sitting quietly on her bed. The shouting had gotten more frequent as of late, however. The child didn't think anything of it. Love, I finally got it. Please just bear with me. The exhaustion was evident, as if the fighting had become tiring. A slamming of a door was heard, with an audible sigh heard as the woman entered the room. Come on, baby, time to go to bed. Flashback. <laughs> We're getting more! <laughs> on my phone, because that's as far as it loaded for me. Oh, shit. Alright, I'll go ahead and take care of the rest. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Just until I get it pulled up. Alrighty. I didn't know who my mother had been talking to that night, or what side of the argument she was on. I hadn't questioned her about it, and if it was, probably a memory she'd long forgotten. You okay? Snapped up. Snap away from my thoughts, I responded. I nodded in response. Yeah, just thinking. He laughed. I noticed. You always crunch your brows together when you're deep in thought. I looked up at him, a bit shocked. He's... He been paying that much attention? He shrugged before noticing the camp. Keep close, okay? Courtney's probably pissed at you. 
When isn't she pissed at us? We just exist, bro. <laughs> I shrugged, continued to walk beside him. Dropping up the berries of the fire, the group applauded. I took a seat at the ground and crossed my legs. Dig in. When the fire enclosed me in warmth, I watched as Bridget jumped slightly. Be cool. It's just an owl. DJ stated, trying to calm her nerves. I popped another berry in my mouth, laying on the ground at this point. Or it could be a bear. Bridget froze, causing me to laugh slight softly. Chill, Bree, I'm joking. She shook her head, rolling her eyes with a smile. Voice just kissed me the creeps, she admitted, scratching the head of the small bunny <coughs> beside her. Duncan smirked, sitting up from his comfortable position next to me. This reminds me of this really scary story I heard once. I sighed. Here we go. Enthusiastically, Jeff pounced on the opportunity. Awesome. Tell it, man. I rolled my eyes. I bet it's not even that scary, I said, leaning back on my hands. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. So suddenly, they, they heard this tap tap tapping on the side of the car. The girl started to freak out, and by this time, even the guy was getting a bit scared. So he turned the car on and stepped on it. When I got back to the girl's house, she opened the door and screamed, because there, hanging from the door handle, was the bloody hook. They say this killer is still alive, wandering these very woods. He could just- he could be just about anywhere, really. Maybe even right here. The male displayed a hook, causing the team to jump behind each guy. I, for one, sat in my position on the ground, standing up. Boring. Maybe try not to be so cliché. I said, stretching my arms over my head. Duncan laughed. May not have gotten you, but look at the rest of their faces, what's priceless. Courtney glared. That was not funny. She cried, crossing her arms. Suddenly, a wolf howled, not too far from where they were. Panicked, I took a few steps back, bumping into another body. So the story didn't scare you, yet a baby wolf does? <laughs> wolves are sc- wolves can be scary, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, that's- that's straight up- I- I'd be scared. Yeah, that's like when you see, like, like, in- in the woods, like, if you see a bunch of baby bears, they're cute as shit, but you know if the mother's nearby, they're gonna rip you to fucking shreds. <laughs> Oh yeah, like that's bad. You yeah, that's leave. yeah, that's when you get the fuck out of there. Exactly. Duncan asked, grabbing my shoulders to stop me from knocking him over. I shrugged out. Of, I shrugged out of his grasp, crossing my arms. <laughs> ha ha! As everyone gathered in the tent, I made sure the fire would be secure overnight. Duncan rested against a tree, watching as I piled some wood near the tent. You gonna join the scaredy cats? He asked as I brushed off the dirt. No, nah, that's too cramped in there for my liking. However, I don't want to be stuck out here with you either. I laughed before taking a seat beside him. Rude, he stated before laying down. Night, princess, he said before almost instantly dozing off. I just sat there, resting my head in my hands. Slowly, my eyelids began to sink, leaving me to drop into a light doze. Not even an hour later, I was awoken by the fire crackling madly. Seeing the tent burst into flames, <laughs> I jumped up, prepared to help the people inside. I then realized they were standing outside the tent, grim looks on their faces. Duncan watched on, a slight look of amusement <laughs> on his face. Great. That's just great, Bridget. Now we don't have nowhere to sleep. I roll my eyes, hearing Courtney chew, the p chew into poor Bridget. Calm down, Courtney. She didn't mean it. I stated while the Bruna just ignored me. Yeah, John McQueen, relax, it's cool. Duncan said before Courtney gave him a deathly glare. Cool? It's cool? Things could not get possibly get worse. Just as if Karma was waiting for those words, it began to rain. <laughs> Courtney yelled angrily, sighing as DJ quickly grabbed a big leaf. Rushing over, I ducked underneath, uh, bunching in with the rest of them. It was going to be a long night. The warmth of the sun was like a big, fuzzy blanket, making me sigh in happiness. I snuggled into the comfort of another body, my arms securely around them, my head resting on their chest. Wait, body? I opened my eyes, looking up to see a familiar green grin. Morning, sunshine. I froze, blinking for a few seconds. Then I then realized the position we were in. My body was on top of his, his arm draped over my back lazily. I shoot up, clearing my throat. Damn, I was enjoying that. Duncan laughed, stretching his body. I rolled my eyes. Well, don't expect it to happen again, Sunshine, I smirked, standing up and yawning. Come on, let's get back to the camp. Dragging myself over to the cabins, I noticed that we'd made it back before the gophers. Yes, I smiled, half-fiving DJ. 
The gophers come piling in shortly after, defeated looks on their face. Look, they're already here already. Ugh. Heather explained, causing me to smirk. Nah, not so fast, gopherinos. Seems like the killer bass are missing a few fish. I paused my celebration, stopping back to reality. Katie and Sadie, I exclaimed, scanning for the duo. I'm pretty sure they got eaten by wolves last night. Courtney shrugged by her shoulders, causing me to glare at her. Who treats teammates like that? <laughs> <coughs> Suddenly, the girls run out to the group, panic panting frantically. Let's face it, we lost. Instead of sticking around to hear their wild story, I left, continuing back into the forest. After the talk from inside the trailer, I was more curious than ever. After the short walk, I reached the clearing, but the trailer had disappeared. Crap, who moved it? I glanced around, looking for any trails of tires. And, aha, there they are, leading off a bit further from the clearing. Looks like the person who wanted to hide it forgot to cover their tracks. Trailing along, I followed the tracks, coming to a stop. The trailer was there, along with a few tents. Ducking behind the trailer, I noticed two camera guys talking in hushed voices. So, you think they'll let, let her know? Daffel, you heard the story. True, we better get back. We need to be there for the elimination. The two left, leaving me in a few days. What story were they talking about? We're getting, we're getting tea! I forgot that there was lore in this. We're getting lore! Lore. <laughs> Sitting on the stump, my fingers drummed the hard wood, but I was petrified. After my- oh, shit, shit, hold on. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> after- <laughs> I accidentally clicked on some comments. Uh, you're good. <laughs> okay. After my incident with Courtney, I was afraid I'd be voted out. She'd find her way, and I just knew it. You've all cast your votes. The camper who does not receive a marshmallow must immediately hit the dock of shame, grab the boat of losers, and head the heck out of here. You can't come back. Ever. Now. I can see you're all tired, so tonight I'll just throw them to you. Savvy? I rolled my eyes. Couldn't he just spare the pleasantries? Courtney. Duncan. Bridget, DJ, Harold, Jeff, Tyler, Shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny! <laughs> Having her name be Shotgun. <laughs> when I received the marshmallow, I sighed in relief. Things were okay. Ladies, this is the final marshmallow of the evening. Sadie, the two girls gasped, nearly climbing onto each other. I let them have a moment of privacy, feeling a slight bit sorry for the girls. They'd been nearly inseparable the entire time that they'd been there. Leaving the campfire, I went back to the cabins, not wanting to see the heartbreak scene unfold. Sitting on the log in front of the cabin, I glanced over at the water. Honestly, it looked as if someone hadn't taken care of it in years. It was all murky and dirty. A twig snap made me become alert, scanning the dark. A strong hair covered my- ARE WE GETTING KIDNAPPED?! <laughs> oh no. A strong hand cover my mouth. I I still want to be a surprise though. I want to act like I didn't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what if the reader didn't read this yet? <laughs> okay. All right. True. Go on with your dramatics. I will be dramatic. Totally dramatical, if I should I say. I see. <laughs> I see. That was a good one. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> A strong hair covered my mouth, reaching another reaching out in front of me. It was a hook. As the mouth, as the hand muffled my scream, a bound of laughter began. Gotcha! Duncan laughed, watching me in the, f watching as I froze in fright. It came into my line of view, me holding my sh my hand to my chest. Don't do that! I cried, trying to re regulate my breathing. He smirked, taking a seat next to me. You said it wasn't scary. He recalled me, sh me shooting a glare at him. That was before someone had a hook in my face. God, Duncan, you don't scare people like that. I said, facing him. He shrugged, watching me intently. I thought back to last night and decided to ask. So, Duncan, I wanted to ask what happened between you and Courtney the other night. I turned my gaze to the ground, waiting for his response. He sighed, and I looked back up at him. Well, he began before trailing off. Come on, Mohawks, Bill, I said, raising my brow. 
fine. She said she didn't want any relationships being formed, as it could ruin the team. I paused, taking in what he said. Anyway, I need to check in with the guys. We need to figure out what DJ's planning on doing with the rabbit. With that, we headed to the cabin, almost in a rush. I sat there for a few more moments. What was Courtney meaning by relationships? Duncan and I were friends. Or did he just stay otherwise? Oh shit. Mm. Alright, I think we have time for one more. Alright. Phobia factor. I need, need Wattpad to load <laughs> right now. We have okay. an author's right. note. Well, this is, no, this is, no. yeah, this is old as shit. Saying that they didn't want to update, but they did. And they're like, so, how do you guys feel about cussing? <laughs> wow. I'm fine with it. But. Yeah. As long as we don't get, like, some weird shit going on, you know? that. Yeah, there's definitely some weird ones out there. Uh, yes. <laughs> I can attest to it. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Let's see what we're working with. Let's go. I find my team sitting around the campfire, moping about their recent loss. Bridget seemed to be com comforting Sadie. The girl's face was drenched in tears. I give a sympathetic smile, taking a seat beside the sad girl. Hey, it's okay. I begin to soothe, rubbing her back gently. Just think, Katie's out there somewhere, thinking that you have a chance to win this. I say. Sadie glanced up at me, her tears beginning to subside. You really think so? She quivered, a small quaver in her voice. I know so. I say before the girl pulled me into a tight hug. I'd never been much of an affectionate person, to say the least, but I felt I had to help Sadie. Gently embracing her, I noticed a small smile forming on her lips. Thanks, shotgun. You too, Bridget. <laughs> It's never not going to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> she turns to the blonde, Bridget smiling back broadly, squeezing Sadie's shoulder in comfort. Don't sweat it. We're a team. We have to take care of each other. I nod in agreement before we're uh, interrupted by Courtney. What do you guys want? Come by to rub it in? She sneered, almost angrily at Trent, who I noticed was carrying something in his hands. They looked like cookies? We got you some extra dessert after our uh, tuck shop party. Thought you might want some, he explained, me bouncing onto the opportunity. I haven't had something decent to eat the entire time we've been here. Don't mind if I do. Grabbing a cookie from the plate, I take a bite of it, hearing Trent's laughter. So what? You're just being nice? Courtney asked, curiosity on her face. Gwen sighed. Okay, Owen's tank up our cabin, and we need some t time to air out. But how do you sync up both boy and girl cabins if they're separated? I asked, taking another bite. Gwen shrugged. That's Owen for you. I nodded before glancing to see Courtney squirming in fear. I I'm good, she said to Beth, who was offering her a plate of, of green jelly with gummy worms. You dieting or something? Duncan asked, and I realized that he had only just shown up. He took a seat next to me, smiling. I wanted to ask about our conversation... But not in front of everyone. No, I, I I just don't like green jelly, okay? I glanced at her, a brow raised. Jelly? Really? Jelly's so fucking good. I just ate jelly. <laughs> oh nice. Dude, that shit goes hard. I don't Jelly is the best food in the world and you can fight me on that. <laughs> I mean, I I don't really like jello. You don't? I, the flavor, I don't enjoy it. It's like too artificial for me. Oh, okay, that makes like sense. It. I was be like, you could choose which flavor of Jello that you get, bro. <laughs> I mean, I, I've never had one that I enjoyed. Dude, you should. If you like Sour Patch Kids, you should try the Sour Patch Kids uh, Jello. It's really good, especially the blue raspberry okay. one. Does it actually taste like Sour Patch Kids? It, it does have a sour taste to it. Okay, good. Yeah. Maybe I will give it a shot. Look at that. Recommendations right here. <laughs> yeah, man. Food brings people together. <laughs> it does. As Brett brings the plate to DJ, he squeals, knocking the plate- the, knocking the jelly out of Beth's hands, and lands on the ground, chunks flying everywhere. 
Sorry for tripping. Snakes just freak me out, he explained, staring at the worm. Tyra pinched it. I feel ya. Chickens give me the creeps, dude. I couldn't help but let out a small giggle. This was beginning to get interesting. Suddenly, it was a whole fear fest. Everyone was pitching in their fear. What's my f worst fear? I guess being buried alive. Gwen shivered. Lindsay began to breathe heavily. Walking through a minefield in heels. Flying man, that's some crazy stuff, Owen admitted. Ha I will never go up in a plane. Ever, Izzy joined. Jeff frowned. I'm scared of hail. Trent gave him a look. It's small but deadly, dude. Bridget sighed, being left alone in the woods. She turned to glance at the trees, me giving her a reassuring squeeze on the arm. Sadie wiped her face. Bad haircuts. Oh, okay. I changed mine. That's so much scarier than a minefield. <coughs> Lindsay chimed in again, causing me to raise a brow at her. It was actually better than a minefield. Having to defuse a bomb under pressure. When did you need to do that? <laughs> Finally it reached Courtney, who shook her head. I'm not afraid of anything, she exclaimed, Duncan rolling his eyes. I call bull, Courtney glared at him. Oh really? What's your fear then, Mr. Know-it-all? Duncan paused, glancing at me. I smear across my arms. This ought to be good. C Celine Dion music store, Sandy, is... I cracked out in a fit of laughter, receiving a glare from the guy. It's not funny, shotgun. They scare me. <laughs> <laughs> He said, It's a little funny. Yeah. You should see the way they draw her for the challenge, bro. Oh, God. Like, they draw the Sandy. I never heard of Celine Dion <laughs> at all, but really? the way. I had to look up what she looked like. <laughs> God. But the way they drew her for, like, the challenge is really funny. <laughs> he said, Me wiping the, my tears away. I gave him a side hug, still laughing. Poor baby. I, I calm my laugh into a couple of giggles, unaware of the red cheeks he was displaying. Pulling away, I looked back at the rest of the group. Anyway, what about you, shotgun? Lashana asked, everyone glancing over at me. I smirked, shaking my head. No way. I'm not spilling a damn thing. <laughs> True. Come on, we said ours. Beth whined, me rolling my eyes. Fine. Claustrophobia. I can't believe we're scared of Santa Claus. <laughs> I know. Dude, Lame. this December must be real tough for shotgun. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Nightmare. <laughs> I can't be in confined spaces. I completely lose it. And I'm petrified of heights. May not have seemed like it on our first day, but I was dying internally. I believe all the comments on the side here are people telling everyone else their greatest fear. <laughs> As well. uh, community. Yeah, community brings people together. <laughs> yes. Oh, back. So we're getting, we're getting, we're getting a ba a flashback. Oh boy. I hid under the desk, my hands covering my mouth. I heard the footsteps slowly roaming the room. Gee, I wonder where she went. Looks like I'm playing hide and seek with a champ. A giggle left my mouth before I saw a pair of legs. Found you. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Out of nowhere yeah. memory. <laughs> I mean, if it's relevant. Yeah, I, maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe to the claustrophobia. Maybe. No, oh, that's a good point. You were- <laughs> you're, you're right! <laughs> that's what I'm here for. Yeah, genius. That was big brain right there. Thanks, man. I try. Mm-hmm. As we sat in our respective tables, Chris bounded in, a devilish smirk plastering his face. I could tell things wouldn't be good. Campers, your next challenge is a little game I like to call Phobia Factor. Prepare to face your worst fears. Ah, oh, shit. <coughs> Morning bells went off in my head. No way. Now for our first victims. Heather, meet us all in the theater. It's sumo time. Gwen, you, me, the beach. A few tons of sand. Chef Hatchet, didn't you have an order for Tyler here today? <clears throat> I watched as slowly the realization hit them. Slowly, people were realizing things taking a turn for the worst. Beth jumped into a pool of worms, even eating a few. Yeah. I felt sick to my stomach, although I was proud. Nice one, Beth. I shot her a thumbs up. Lindsay and Sadie were given terrible wigs to wear. They could have been worse. They could have actually ruined their own hair. Owen and Izzy were forced into an unstable plane. I could hear their screams from down the ground. 
Chef dressed up as a spider in a spider outfit and chased Lashana around in it. The screens were deafening. It honestly gave me the fright too, imagining a huge chef-sized spider chasing you around. Harold was ambushed by ninjas in the bathroom, knocking himself out. No point for us. Heather had a date with a sumo wrestler. It was honestly very funny to see. <laughs> Bridget was forced to camp- sumo wrestlers were kind people. Yeah. Bridget was forced to camp in the woods alone for six hours. I gave her a tight hug before she headed off. You'll be safe. Find somewhere safe and stay put. I smiled, sending her off. Good luck, I called, watching her disappear into the trees. Gwen was forced into a glass box buried into sand. Trent, supervising her, was chased by his own fear. A mime! <laughs> DJ was forced to pick up a snake. It was lucky for Corny's pushy attitude for once. Cody had to defuse a time bomb made out of trash cans. I stood to the side... I s shit. I stood to the side... Maybe that's what tripped me up, because they put side and then B-side as well. Yeah. I stood beside Chris, watching Duncan eye off the standee. Come on, Duncan. He's She's probably really nice. He stood frozen, me sighing. It, it looks so real. <laughs> God. I, I gave him a small smile. It's alright. Remember, she's fake. I... I called, tapping my foot. My anxiety was kicking in. I knew it would be my turn soon. I, I went a bit closer to him, so, speak, speaking softly. Hey, you don't have to do it. We won't pressure you. Although, if you do hug her, I'm happy to owe you. Me and my marshmallow if we win? I said, him rolling his eyes with a smile. Tempting. How about I hug her, then we leave it up to me what you owe. I roll my eyes. Stubborn. Fine. With that, he began to edge to the standee. Running now, he hugged it for a brief moment before recoiling back. <laughs> I did it, he exclaimed. I ran up to him, hugging him tightly. You did it, I say, before letting go of him. I cleared my throat, him letting out a small laugh. Shotgun, time for your fear. <laughs> I swallowed. Crap. <laughs> All you have to do is stay in this closet for half an hour. Simple, right? Chris exclaimed, motioning to the small space. It looked barely there. It would only just fit me. Noticing my frightened look, Chris sighed. I can make it 15 if you want. I looked at him, raising my brow. Was he being nice? I shook my head. Nope. Half an hour. Not so hard. I began to feel lightheaded, Duncan holding me up. I'll be right outside, he encouraged, before I sprinted into the closet and closed the door. I felt my breathing increase, and I started to shake. I needed to do this for the team. You okay? I heard a... F faint voice outside, trying to swallow the lump in my throat. Yep, I barely whispered, feeling my palms beginning to sweat profusely. Arms weak. Palms are yeah. sweaty already. Mom's spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> I would love some spaghetti right now. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Hey, Duncan? Yeah? Tell me about your family. I said, trying to distract myself from the dizziness beginning to mutter. Well, a lot of them are cops. They're all about the law and everything. My dad actually sent me to juvie once or twice, because he found me trespassing in the school. Black sheep, I guess. I don't care, though. I'd rather not be forced to abide by the law. I nodded, even though he couldn't see me. So, do you have, did you ever have a clue about your dad? He asked. I sighed. No. My mother kept everything he owned out of sight for me and my brother. I did snoop in her room once or twice. I never found anything. One part of me wanted to find something to figure out my other half, but the other didn't want to. For what my mom told me, he was too committed to his work, and that was never really around for us. I knew it was a lie. My dreams told me otherwise. I never raised my suspicions to my mother. Look at that. Only 25 minutes left. Would you rather go swimming with sharks or stay with bears? I asked, resting my back against the back of the wall of the confined area. I was still clammy, but Duncan was doing his best to be distracting. Sharks, I'm a good swimmer. Would you rather date your ex again or date one of your teammates here? I paused, biting my lip. Since I hate my ex so much, it'd have to be a teammate. Duncan seemed to let out a relieved sigh. Which one would you date? He asked, me shaking my head. 
Excuse me, mister, but it's not your turn. <laughs> I heard an alarm going off, and I was released back into the blinding light of the mess hall. Damn, that was a Look quick 25 minutes. <laughs> it re yeah, I was just thinking that. Like, that, that straight up was not 25 minutes. Yeah, it's fine, though. <laughs> Continuity errors, it's okay. Yeah, it happens. Look at that, you made it through. I saw Duncan grinning at me. I raced out of the mess hall, stopping outside to take in big gulps of the fresh air. It's good to be alive, I say, hearing laughter behind me. Alright, let's go see how everyone else is doing. We eventually find Tyler facing a pen full of chickens. Shotgun! Uh, Duncan, nice to see everything went well. Chris smiles, almost genuinely, before turning back to Tyler. Come on, dude! They're chickens! The least they're gonna do is peck you! Tyler shuddered. It didn't seem like he was ready to go in and face his fear. Alright, let's face it. We lost again, I say, turning back to the cabins. Doug could put an arm in front of me, turning it back turning me back around. Not exactly. We do have one more. Everyone glanced at Courtney, who backed away. No! Come on. If you can yell at everyone to do their challenges, then you gotta do your own. I yelled up at the brunette, and able to see her glare from my spot on the ground. Shut up! Oh, yeah, okay. This skipped a lot of things, I'm realizing, as I read. Oh. Okay, so Courtney's biggest fear is green jelly. <laughs> oh, okay. So her challenge is to go up on, like, you know how, like, swimming pools have, like, a diving board? Oh, she has yeah. to dive into green jelly. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Yeah, I- Yeah. I love jelly, but I, I that would probably hurt since it's not water. Well, I mean, also, how are you gonna get out of it? You just it's drown like in, solid. yeah. You just drown in jelly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chris didn't think this one through. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> just jump already! I yell. You do it. She sneered back. I rolled my eyes, calming myself down. No point in finding a teammate. Come on, Corny, you can do it! I say, trying to be encouraging. She grabbed at me again. I wasn't getting anywhere. Nope, I'm coming down, she yelled, beginning to climb back down the ladder. I sighed in frustration. I was in the closet for a half an hour just to lose again, and I still wasn't over that fear. <laughs> Imagine being in the closet for years. With a shotgun. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh, funny gay joke. Yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like the gophers win again. I went straight to the elimination ceremony, having it already become dark. The others soon loitered behind me. Okay, Bass, let's just get this over with. The three of you didn't comp complete your challenges. Stay put. Chris threw around the rest of the marshmallows, me catching line with ease. Sorry, Tyler, but you've got a date with the dog of shame. We stood on the dock, waiting as Tyler boarded. Chris, with a, sm with a smug look, spoke. Looks like a new packing order has been established here. Duncan chimed in. It's not like who, who could cry foul. Jeff pinched in. Time for Tyler to fly the coop. Bridget continued. He won't be flying high tonight. <laughs> He's gonna have a good clucking time on that boat, I smiled. Courtney stopped us. Okay, that's enough. As we made everybody back to the cabin, I was stopped just outside by Duncan. Thanks. I, oh, it's, shit, sorry. Hey, thanks for helping me about my fear today. I shrugged, giving him a smile. Don't sweat it. You did the same for me, remember? So, uh, he- oh shit, he nodded. So, uh, I guess I owe you one, huh? Even though we didn't win. I continue before Duncan made me pause. No need. Let me do this one thing. Before I can react, kiss me on the head softly smirking. Good night, princess. With that, he headed to the guy's cabin, leaving me in a fluttered state. I had to, <laughs> I had to learn how to re react damn quick enough. I, I think... <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Pretty Bra damn good. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting there. Yep. Okay, so... What did you think? Um, a lot of challenge-based stuff in these chapters. Um, 
got got more hints to the lore. So we are we're moving up in the world, I feel. Yeah, we're getting we're getting lore drops and everything. Yeah, man. Development. Is all this jazz. Is this convincing you to watch Total Drama at all? <laughs> um uh, not really. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My I have I'm I'm really picky. I'm sorry. No, it, it's fine. I, I can't get everyone into it, but <laughs> I'm trying to get my boy into it, too. He did watch mm -hmm. the Redonkulous Race with me, which I am glad, but I don't nice, think he'll watch any nice. other seasons. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, if you guys would like to check out this book, I will have a link down below for you guys to read as well. I highly recommend this. This author is really good with words and writing things down and everything. The, the fucking the foreshadowing is super good. So I highly recommend, and also check out their other books as well. But um, now it's time for our favorite, yes. <laughs> our favorite wheel. Wheel, wheel, wheel. It's like the wheel, like the wheel of fortune, but this one's called the wheel of regrets. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I did a bit of a changes on this. So okay. if we've continued, like if we started like a like a. A book and everything and it still continues I put the name of the book and then the ship right so at least okay. we'll know what the fuck we're doing <laughs> nice all right so as long as it doesn't land on totally dramatical again we'll we'll be reading whatever it is next episode so let's spin yeah remember putting this on here. I think we put it as a joke. <laughs> well, we are about to read it. Yeah. Didn't we do that also? Like, oh yeah, we put the Germany and Italy one as a joke, and then we were like, ah yeah, oh, shit. And, it, uh, and then we landed yeah, on we, it. We paid for that. <laughs> the Wheel of Regret stayed true to its name. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it did. So, next episode, we don't know what book we'll find for Shadow and, and this reader, but <laughs> we'll find one. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, my name, my name is Phoenix, this has been Coda, and we'll see you hey. guys next time for another reading. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.